Put that away. It might be the guard. I don't, I don't care who it is. We're going to get that stuff back. Hey! Hey, you! Stop! I never had a dog when I was a kid, so when I was young, it seemed that the world was divided into two kinds of people. Those who had dogs, and those who had allergic sisters. I suppose if I had a dog or a cat, or even a gerbil back in my formative years, I might now be able to fathom why they bring out the very best in people, and the very worst. How is he? He'll live. Mostly a shock. We might be able to get a statement before they transport him. Hey, sounds like a kennel. That's a research lab. Does a research lab smell any better than a kennel? Yeah, not much. You want a tour? Yeah. Yeah. Look, I've been waiting here for 20 minutes. Who are you waiting for? You. Well, that's the best news I've heard tonight. Not you, a detective. You're a detective, aren't you? They keep telling me you're gonna get to me, so get to me. I've got a hell of a lot more to do than hang around here all night. And who are you? My name is Janet Crossley. I'm one of the researchers here. When our head office got a call about the break-in... Can I see some identification? I forgot it. They called and told me to get down here immediately. Now, look, if you don't need me, would you please mind telling me so, so I can go home? I have about three weeks of studying to do, and I only have three more days to do it in. You sound more like a student than a researcher. What's that, detective? A deduction? Just conversation. I'm finishing my PhD, okay? Okay with me. You wanna come with me? Look, it feels like I've been hanging around here half the night. I guess I didn't do too much for my temper. Sorry. Too much studying. It used to drive me nuts, too. They broke in through the gate, disconnected the alarm, then started painting signs all over the walls. Careful, there's mice all over. Liberating the political prisoners, huh? By unloading a whole clip of ammo at the guard. Well, that's kind of strange, isn't it? What? Well, that they would carry guns at all. These are the kind of people that believe that fly swatters should be banned. Oh, man. Three months' work down the drain. What was your project? I'm testing an enzyme-producing drug. Now I'm gonna have to start all over from scratch. No one's ever gonna be able to figure out which animals belong to which group. What were they testing there? <sighs> Lipstick. We do all kinds of research here. Industrial, drugs, medical, cosmetic. Gold lab supplies facilities, the animals, and the technicians. You know anything about the friends of the silent ones? Yeah. They're a fringe group. Always threatening to blow up labs. I thought they were harmless. I guess I was wrong. We have to get you to a hospital. Take the pictures first, and then we'll go. And those two. Damn it, leave it. Let's get the pictures. What are they doing now? They're just sitting there. I'm gonna take them. No. For God's sake, don't do anything that will damage the case. Let's go now. 
Well, I guess that's all for now. Sorry we had to drag you away from all your study. Oh, it's okay. It's been kind of fun. It's nice to get away from work sometimes. Yeah, I guess it must be kind of tough working full time while trying to get a degree. Well, a lot of the work that I'm doing is in connection with my PhD. And it's nice to get a paycheck. I'm being shot by a space man. A guy in a spacesuit, not a spaceman, and he didn't say he shot him. The guy was so drunk, he's lucky he didn't explode when the bullet hit him. Are we talking about the guard? Mm-hmm. Well, I thought he saw two guys in ski masks get in the back of the van. Where'd the spaceman come from? From the flying saucer, of course. He says space suit, Freddy. White, shiny, with air tanks. Space suit. Ah, uh, excuse me. The space suit he's describing sounds like a biohazard air type. Oh. Uh, this is Janet Crossley. She works here. We have three of those suits in our facility. They're kept in the nap room. The nap room? The negative air pressure room. Whoa, that's odd. What's odd? The room is operational. The noise you heard when I opened the door? That was a pressure equalizing. So? Well, when the room is working, the air pressure inside is kept lower than the air pressure outside. And when it's not in use, the air pressure is normal. These are the suits. Mm. Close the door, please. It smells like formalin. What's that? An antiseptic. Don't you see? This proves it. Proves what? That somebody's been using this room. You got the letter? It's all right here. I'm going in with you. No! You know what to do. Do it. I'll be okay. allowed to use this room without proper authorization. In fact, this room hasn't been used in I don't know how long. But somebody was in here recently. And they used this probably when they injected the lab animal. And they used the airtight suits for, well, for something. And, uh, uh, that's my theory. Are all the suits here? Yeah. Dr. Isley. A little, uh, fast and loose with the rules. I think you mean someone was using this room without authorization. Oh, yes. Oh, it's not as grim as all that. Janet can tell you we encourage our people to do their own work. I, I imagine someone just forgot to ask. Could that someone have been using the room tonight? Well, no one had a pass to work late. I... Uh, don't you think this could have something to do with the break-in, Dr. Isley? I mean, after all, the guard's description of the suits. Gary? Uh, isn't he the sci-fi fanatic? He, uh, spends half his time talking about space travel. I don't think it's exactly surprising that with the shock, his imagination would, uh, run away with him. How is he, by the way? When I last asked, he's doing okay. Mm, I'm glad to hear it. What's the extent of the damage? Um... Some of the animals are loose in the other labs. My experiment's ruined. I think some of the other people are probably going to have to start over again. That's about it. Well, I guess it could have been a lot worse. We'd like a list of the people who worked here in the last six months. Can you do that? Hmm. I'll have my secretary get it for you in the morning. Or uh, perhaps Janet could get it for you right now. <laughs> you don't mind, do you, Janet? No. Good. I understand you've been getting a lot of threats. Usual sort of thing. Calls, mostly. I... I don't give them much attention. Maybe you should have. Does it make any sense to you? Does anything in this world make sense? Well, it makes sense to me. They're making a statement. I know what they did was wrong, but what they're doing at places like Gold Labs is far worse. That is the real crime. What is? The kind of things they do to animals in the name of research. Watch your step. 
Look, don't get me wrong. I am not against genuine medical research. What I am against is the big companies, the, the chemical and the cosmetic companies, farming out their testing to places like Gold Labs because they don't want to get their hands dirty. Do you know where they get some of their animals, Tom? I think I'm going to find out. Pets. They are people's pets. Some of these outfits actually pay people to steal animals. Am I not right? Mm-hmm. The research has been done. And from what I understand, they get most of their animals from pounds. I mean, they're going to be destroyed anyway. Does that give them any right to torture them first? Torture? I warn you. Well, what else would you call it when they spray an animal's eyes with chemicals a hundred times a day, day after day, until they are so painfully swollen and ulcerated that these animals can barely see anymore? All so that we can have another brand of mascara. How nice. I admit there are a few abuses. A few? Do you know how many animals are destroyed every year under the name of research? Do you? <sighs> Did you ever have a, a pet as a kid, Tom? A dog? A, here it is. A dog? A cat? Uh... No, I lived in an apartment. I didn't allow pets. Well, that probably explains your indifference. <sighs> Nichols. Yeah, just a moment, please. Tommy. Uh, Okay, uh, send it down to Mid-South. Uh, Kevin, Kevin. I'm having something sent over to the squad room. I think you're going to want to have a look at it. Yeah, Mid-South. Night, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Advise that unless these obscene experiments are ended, we will strike again. Treat animals with their God-given dignity or we'll strike again. Friends of the silent ones. It was left at the front desk by a girl in her early 20s who addressed to the eagle. Listen, what was that written on the briefcase? Well, it's cosmetic, huh? You can't make out the rest of it. No, no, I think... Can I see that? <clears throat> that's gold lab stencils on the cases and the briefcases, and I think that might be a monkey inside the case. Well, hold it a second. I didn't notice any monkeys at gold lab. Neither did I. Listen, would somebody please get this thing blown up? <sighs> All right, let's go see if that guard's come, come on, talking space. Come let me see the picture. Yeah. After he shot me, he just kept on firing away. I thought he was he was shooting at me, but he but he wasn't. He was shooting at the van. That's what confused me. Confused you? Well, I thought they were all together, but they weren't. He went after him in a Trans Am. <laughs> I can see it now. I uh, don't suppose you can see the license now. Part of it. T. B.I. And then he turned on his high beams. And it was like the... It was like the twin sons of Xantron exploded. What about the space suit? Yeah, I saw that just before I lost it. Guy comes right up to me. It was like he, he was gonna beam me aboard. Aboard? Well, he must have had a ship, right? Okay, I've got about 200 possible matchups on that partial plate. I mean, it's gonna take a while to check them out. Well, better get started on it. That's all we got going right now. Not quite all. The blow ups from those pictures Tom gave you just came back from the lab. Definitely monkeys got the cages. The cosmetic case is ours, certainly. What about the monkeys? Nobody uses monkeys for cosmetic research. They're too expensive. Why would someone take a picture of animals from somewhere else? Well, you'll have to ask them. I don't know why they'd wreck our lab and ruin three months of work. I don't know why they do what they do. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, no, that is all for now, Dr. Isaac. Thank you. So what do you think this is? It's probably nail polish remover.
Frank. I'm glad you're here. Did you get the personal records? Better than that. It's cappuccino monkey fur. It was on the swab we found in the nap room. Dr. Isley said you didn't use monkeys. That's right, we don't. But somebody obviously did. Yeah, tonight. The friend sent these along with a letter to one of the newspapers. This doesn't make any sense. What? The carrying cases these monkeys are in. What about them? They're for carrying contaminated animals. Hey, that must be it. What? The cases, the suits, the nap room. You'd only use all that if you were dealing with something really dangerous. Like what? Like a deadly virus? A biological warfare agent? A witness on the scene described the getaway vehicle as a dark... Richard, it's on the news. Van. Hurry up. Although descriptions of the van's drivers are not available, messages no, painted on the We got a description of your van. ...identify them as members of an animal rights group, the Listen. Friends of the Silent Ones. Further investigation... I think we should split up. We can't find either of us for a couple of days. The publicity will be worth it. We've got the public's attention now. Let's not lose it. Are you all right? For one thing, batch 167B didn't have anything to do with cosmetics. There's purchase orders here for live cultures from a lab in North Carolina. Are they dangerous? Could be. I know that that lab specializes in diseases. I'll get Dr. Isley. Uh, I checked her lab a few minutes ago. She's already left. Can you find out who is running these tests? Uh, that data's confidential. So are the details of the tests. I don't have the access code to those files. What about the monkeys? Somebody must have ordered them. Can you see who was? Good idea. We can find out who requisitioned the primates, and we'll find out who was running the experiment, right? Right. Hello? It's for you. O'Brien. Which hospital? They're some kind of animal rights group. They took pictures of everything and sent them to the newspapers. Police are all over the place. What else do the police know? They've got pictures of the monkeys. Sooner or later, they are going to figure it out. Then what are we going to do? Relax, Ellen. We know exactly where those people are. All we have to do is take the stuff away from them. They have to be warned. They don't even know what they are carrying. Well, now's no time for regrets, is it? We're almost home free. Tomorrow morning, first thing, we meet the buyer. Think about it. Think about all that money. It's worth a little risk, isn't it? This is not just a little risk. If they open those cases, it won't be just them. It could infect hundreds of people, thousands. Do you have any idea how deadly that strain is? Well, we don't have anything to worry about. You gave us our shots, remember? You promised me no one would get hurt. Remember? Relax. I'll get it back. We'll be together. That's what you want, isn't it? His name is Douglas Gelman, a college student. As soon as they realized it was a gunshot wound, they called the cops. And as soon as the cops realized it was a 9 millimeter bullet, they called us. All right, how's uh, Gelman's condition? Funny thing, but half an hour ago, I would have said his condition was serious but stable. But now, now I don't know. The bullet nicked the lower lobe of his left lung. That's serious, but not life-threatening. The operation went fine. Now he's running uh, a temperature. It's as if he's fighting some kind of, uh, some kind of battle with an infection that doesn't seem to have anything to do with the wound. Could it be a virus? Well, it's possible. Why? Well, he broke into a research facility. It's possible he was exposed to something there. What? 
We don't know that. We're trying to find out. Would you let us know when we can talk to this guy? Yeah, we'll do. And you let me know as soon as you get any more information. Yeah. Where's Carson? He's supposed to be looking for some witnesses. Five get to ten, he's checking out the nurses. Any luck, Freddy? Yeah, a little. With the case? Yeah, I talked to the orderly who brought the kid into the hospital. He says he saw the van. He didn't get the plate number. It figures. He did, however, see a Trans Am follow it out of the lot. So the guy with the gun is still after him. Or how in the hell that guy figures into this? tell you anything. You don't understand. You can't. You can't understand how important this all is. Gelman, you don't understand us. You're not listening. This guy who shot you, he wants to make it a clean sweep, and so far he is a lot closer to doing that than we are to catching him. Doug, whatever it is you took out of that lab, it might be dangerous. It could hurt a lot of people. You want to be responsible for that? We don't want to hurt anybody or anything. That's the whole... We need a name, huh? Can you help us with that? Just a minute, just a minute. Can you help us with a name? A name? Richard. Richard? Richard who? Big heaven. Richard, come on, help me. Richard Turnbull. Get back. You have to get out. What happened? I don't know. He arrested for some reason. I've never seen anyone go that bad that quickly. Why, why is he bleeding? Severe dehydration. The membranes in his nose dry out and crack, and then the uh, blood vessels rupture. I don't know what that what that virus is, but it sure as hell is dangerous. He may not make it. tell you what I know, and you tell me what you know. I know that you stole two monkeys and a briefcase. Now it's your turn. Where's the briefcase? I don't know. Where? I found something. I, I'll try it. I'll try it. Where? 187 Crescent Room, apartment 403. She's got what you're looking for. What about me? Aren't you gonna help me? Nobody can do that, kid. The stuff is at the girl's place. I'm on my way there now. I want to be there when you get it. I have to be sure the bottles haven't been damaged. Okay, I'll pick you up. I talked to someone I know at our animal warehouse. 
He told me that Dr. Isley requisitioned the monkeys herself. And she picked them up herself. That's why there's no record of them. I feel terrible telling you this. She's been a big help with my career. She got me my job at Gold Labs. Why would she do something like this? Still no answer at Isley's place. It was time we had a long talk with the good doctor. Put an APB out on her. Got an address for Richard Turnbull. Let's go see Richard Turnbull. You got an interesting name on that partial plate, Lieutenant. A rental checked out to one Gordon C. Telford. It's a Trans Am, and the computer's got a few things to say about Mr. Telford. Like? Well, he's a soldier of fortune type. Got himself involved in some Looney Tunes operation down in Central America a couple of years ago, smuggling weapons to some ex-army officers who were going to start an uprising. The thing fizzled out, but a lot of government agencies still like to keep their eye on Mr. Telford. He's got good connections to bad people everywhere. You got an address, huh? Yeah, it's a motel up near the airport. You and Colby pick him up. But for God's sakes, be careful. He sounds like he could be dangerous. Telford. No, Colby. It must be this one. What's your last name? I need a last name. You gotta give me your last name. Okay, check it out. See what you can do. Guy's pretty incoherent. But it looks like the girl took the briefcase. Her name's Alma or something. Well, I think we better find Alma pretty quick. Thanks. Do you have any girlfriends? Does the name Alma mean anything to you? Yeah, I got it. Thanks. And I just talked with that lab in North Carolina. Two months ago, Dr. Isley ordered three sets of live cultures. They're all rare, they are dangerous, and they are highly contagious. How dangerous? Could be fatal. Do you mean to say that she ordered this stuff from some lab in North Carolina and they sent it to her with no questions asked? Well, they asked her the usual questions and she gave them the usual answer. She's an acknowledged researcher. Kevin, I just called the chief. Now, they're flying in some specialists to look at Gilman and Turnbull. But until that time, they want us to keep the wraps on this thing. We cannot risk a panic. And Kevin, for God's sakes, don't get too close to this stuff. She ordered chemicals used in gene splicing. Gene splicing? Altering the viruses in specific ways, making something new out of them. That's what she used the monkeys for, to test whatever monster she was creating. Well, how contagious is it? <sighs> Depends on how she's altered it. it. Could be very dangerous, Frank. Believe me, you have to be very careful. Great, got it. What? Alma. You got something, Jim? Uh, the super at Turnbull's apartments that she visited all the time. She used to park in the residence spots. Got a lot of tickets. Get on the motor vehicles right away. going with you. It's all here. Let's go. We can't leave her like this. 
Well, we can't stay here, can we? Now, come on. No. We made arrangements to meet the buyer first thing in the morning. He's expecting us. If we don't show up, he might get nervous. And if he gets nervous, he just might call the deal off. I don't care about the deal. She needs our help. Well, I care about the deal. It's taken months to set this deal up. I'm not going to blow it now. I am going to give her the vaccine. Are you crazy? What the hell good is it going to do now? It will help. It has to help. Make it fast. So, Brian. You can't treat me like this. Just tell us what the hell you were doing there. The girl. She called me and offered to sell me back the case of cosmetics. And how were you going to pay for them, Dr. Ainsley? Credit cards? You had 56 bucks in your wallet. I wasn't going to pay her the ransom. I was hoping I could talk her out of it. And who has the virus now? Telford? I told you, I don't know anyone named Telford. You know what I'm wondering? What? How are you going to live with yourself? One of these kids dies. All right, let's start from the beginning. She's a sweetheart. What I don't understand is, if it's deadly by itself, why did she alter it? So she could tailor a specific vaccine for it. Well, the mayor's office has offered us all the help they can on this. I got 30 men detailed to run down anyone who had any contact with those kids. What's going to happen when we find them? Check them for the virus. What about us? Testing units going to get here as soon as they can. Right. Great. The problem with biological weapons is controlling the spread. It doesn't differentiate between friend and foe. A vaccine solves that problem. At least there is a vaccine. Right now, we have this much. And we don't know how many people are infected. But not enough to do much good. Not enough for all the people in this room who might have been exposed. But you can manufacture more. Well, with Dr. Isley's cooperation in time. But that would be admitting that she's involved, and she's not about to do that. Manager of the motel where Telford was staying. Telford checked out this morning. Okay, thanks for coming down. You want to take a look at this woman, see if you recognize her, take your time. Yes. Huh? She used to visit him, Telford, in his room. All right, thank you, thank you. But someone along that you might remember. He certainly remembers you. You want to see it one more time? Yep. She's the woman who visited Telford at my motel. Let's try this again, Dr. Isley. What were you going to do with it? Gordon made all of the arrangements. Who are you going to sell it to? I don't know exactly. Uh, a, a middleman was going to smuggle it out of the country and sell it to some government in South America. And how many people were going to die there? No one. The country Gordon wanted to sell it to was only going to use it as a deterrent, a, a bluff. Gordon promised me that it would never be used. And you believed him? When were you going to meet the middleman? Tomorrow morning. Where? I don't know. Come on, Telford was telling you something. I don't know. I didn't want to know. Well, think about it. I want something from you. Sometimes he talked about meeting a freighter. I, I think I heard the name Terra Nova. Uh, 
I never meant for anyone to get hurt. Nobody buys weapons and doesn't use them. Didn't anybody ever tell you that, lady? Okay, five, 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 four, three, five, four. I think we got something here. Seems like Telford kept the good Dr. Isley very much in the dark. Think she'll help with the vaccine? Well, I don't think she's got any choice now. Five, Who are you five, calling? Five, five, uh, Harbor Authority, five, Coast Guard. Five, five, seven, three, five, four. That's Sun Venture Boat Tours. Okay, five, 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 six, eight, seven, one. Wait a minute, let me see that. Where? Sun Venture Boat Tours. Now, why would a man hire a boat this time of the year? Arnie Thomas? Hey, what the hell is this? Are you Arnie Thomas? What's it to you? Police. Yeah. You know a guy called Gordon Telford? Maybe. We know he called you. So what? He's a customer. What were you planning on doing? A little out-of-season fishing? Look, he hired me to take him 10 miles down the river. That's all I know. Where are you going tonight? Nowhere. Home. Yeah. Need a chart to get home? Hey, there ain't no law against carrying a chart. You want to talk law? All right, there isn't a law against aiding and abetting. And there are three kids in a hospital fighting for their lives because of what Telford's involved with. Now, you help us with this. Or I'm going to impound your boat, lift your license, and put your butt in a cell. What do you say? All right. We're supposed to meet a freighter at dawn. Is he coming here? No, I gotta pick him up over at the South End docks. All right. Is this yours? No, it's that tug over there. Nice day for an outfit like that, ain't it, Christine? Yeah, I know how to pick them, don't <laughs> I? Yes, you do, baby. You shall do. You bruise it. You buy it. <laughs> I don't want to bruise it, baby. <laughs> Get someone here to take care of this. I 
understand that three students are in stable condition right now. Are charges pending? No, I don't know what charges are going to be laid. Probably uh, breaking and entering. My guess is that they'll claim the break and enter was an act of conscience. The court will fine them. Give me your suspended and then a medial tournament of folk heroes. Yeah, but don't you wonder how many people might have died if those kids hadn't broken into gold labs and that stuff had gone down to South America? Yeah, think about that. You're the media, too, you know. What are you going to turn them into? There will be those who insist on calling them heroes, but that's to miss an essential truth. Their act was unwitting. The fact that they almost paid for it with their lives does not make it in any way nobler. If there are to be any heroes in this story, they're accidental. Maybe in this age where someone can create a medical miracle one minute and a monstrosity the next, all we can expect are accidental heroes. What's it like? Oh man, it's awful. You stick it right in your stomach. I mean, I got a needle about this long. Oh. He's kidding, right? Better be. Funny. Uh, any word on the charges against Dr. Isley? She's agreed to testify against Telford. I feel sorry for her. Her career is finished. It's better than she deserves. Three people exposed for less than 48 hours, and these are their contacts. What if it had been 100 people in a week? It's frightening how fast these things could spread. Well, we got this one stopped. Yeah, I guess we got this one stopped. Well, thanks for the detective lessons. Oh, anytime. If you ever need any help with a case, give me a call. I will. Even if you don't need any help with a case. I've got the rest of the night off. Dinner? I like breakfast. Sounds good to me.